Hi and welcome to another tutorial for Excel users. In the previous tutorial I showed you how to uh, create date calculations by simply minusing one date off the other. And what I want to do first of all in this video is show you how to avoid some annoying problems that might crop up when you do that. And I had a question from somebody on the previous video which I answered in the comments about what happens when uh, your calculation shows up as a negative value. Is there some way of hiding that or you know putting up some other message maybe and yes there is and the solution is to combine the date calculation with an if function so that you can choose what message to put in if the the, uh, the calculation result goes negative as it has in this case so if you look at my original dates I my first one was Wednesday May the 11th and went through to Friday 10th June which are all now past dates and you can see my days to go is all full of negative values so it doesn't really make any sense when you see it. I mean you should just say something else like um, you know show finished or date passed or whatever or maybe just blank um, there's a, a couple of ways you can solve this problem one of them is is cheap and cheerful which is to use the conditional format and I'll very quickly show you that. You've probably seen this before in one of my other tutorials. So if I select those values there from H7 down to H11, just go to the Format menu, choose Conditional Format. And what I want to have happen, obviously, if, if the value goes negative, is just to basically be hidden. So I'll say if the cell value is in the first box, leave that as it is, and simply say is less than, and then just type in 0 in the result box there so if it's less than zero I'm going to apply a format and I'm going to apply a font color which is right here and the font color is going to be white simple as that so OK that click OK on the conditional format dialog and now as I've got my highlighters you can actually see the white text there on the highlighted parts but if I click away all those negative values will disappear and that's one way of doing it not a very good way, but it's one way. So I'm going to undo all that, bring them back again. And a better way is to apply a an if function and combine that with the calculation. So I'm going to delete. They're already highlighted, so I'll delete the, uh, the values out there. And we'll start again. So this time I'm going to do an if function. So it's equals to begin. Type if, open bracket. Now, obviously, this function it has three parts. As you know, we have a test. Then something we want to have to go in if it's true and something if it's false. Now, in this case, the false part will basically be our date calculation as normal. The test will be to find out if the result of that is negative, and the true part, if it is negative, will be either a blank cell or a message. So I'm, I'm going to put a message in in this case, but you can have a blank cell if you want to. I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is test if the result is going to be negative. So the calculation is very simply, as it was before, so we click on the show date, press minus, and click on the current date, which is right there. I'm going to set that again as an absolute reference, so I'm going to copy the formula down, so I don't want that to change from E3 to E4, etc. Uh, okay, so is that result less than zero, which would make it negative? Type a comma, and if it is negative, I am going to have the word just the word past in there we go I suppose you could type in PAST same thing um, anyway it doesn't really matter <laughs> I'll leave it as past and comma again and then the false part is simply going to be the same calculation but this time it would if it's not a negative result presumably it's either zero or a positive result so I will repeat the calculation so again we click on a7 in this case minus e three and again set that as an absolute reference so it looks complicated but hopefully it makes sense that basically all we're doing is just checking initially if the calculation is going to be result in a negative value if it does we're going to put a word in there that says passed I mean the date's gone and if not we'll simply put the calculation in as we would have done anyway as we initially did so there's a formula I'm going to check it in the formula bar there so equals if open bracket logical test result if true result if false and I click on that tick and we should because it's a, a, a negative result get the word passed in there which we do thankfully now I will just repeat that one more time and show you what 
you need to do to put a, uh, a blank cell in. It's pretty straightforward, really. It's, it's mostly the same, so equals if open brackets. And just repeat the calculation there. Uh, less than zero comma. Now this time my true part is going to be just simply a double quotation and that will put a blank in the cell or basically put nothing in the cell and obviously the result of the uh, formula if it's not true is going to be the same calculation and uh, make that an absolute reference as well. So there we go. So that's the, the same calculation but this time it puts a blank result in rather than anything say a negative value or a word in say so there we go and uh, I can just highlight those two to show there's nothing hidden behind which there wouldn't be now I can then I'll go back and use my pass value so I'm simply going to copy that one down all the way there okay um, and they're all past dates now just to prove it works I'm going to change some of these dates so let's say we're going to repeat these shows in the future so um, I'll tell you what, I'll leave that first one now we'll leave the first two has passed and I will change Citizen Kane to let's say July 18th of July and we'll have the Wizard of Oz in August and uh, we'll have Singing in the Rain in September there we go so now what's happened is our first two results are negative and so the word passed goes in there and our last three results are positive and so the calculation continues as normal um, what that does basically is with this spreadsheet, it just puts a more friendly result into the uh, result cells rather than have something that looks a bit weird. So when you do a calculation, you end up with a negative value. Obviously, that's not, you know, I mean, the result is correct, but it's not what you want people to see. Um, and this makes it a bit more user friendly, sort of puts a message on instead of a value. OK, so that's uh, one thing you can do. So here we have uh, another example of how you might use date calculations in spreadsheets. And this is a simple table of uh, names and dates of birthdays. So I might be able to use this to remember someone's uh, birthday. Uh, so if you have lots of friends and you're always forgetting to send them a card, you might find this useful. Obviously, what I need to do here is put a calculation in this days to go column. So I uh, know how many days there are to go but it, what I will also do here is combine this with an if function and also add in some conditional formatting so make it look quite interesting okay so we'll do the calculation first and as on the previous one I was simply going to do a, an if function so I'm going to do the date calculation obviously but also if the date has passed I want to put a message in to, to say it's gone so you're too late something like that so we'll do equals if open bracket and the first thing I'll do is uh, test the calculation to see if it's a positive date or a negative date and again I go to the the first birthday minus click on the date which is today's date make that an absolute reference and I want to know if that's less than zero in other words has the date actually passed and type a comma if it has passed um, so I'm going to type in there, uh, oh no, I said it, I'll type in there too late. There we go. With an exclamation mark. Type a comma, and if it hasn't passed, I simply want to repeat the calculation, which is going to be the same thing again B4 minus E1. And again, make that an absolute reference in this case. So that's basically as we did it on the previous one. If I press the Enter key now, it tells me there are nine days to go. Okay, so I'm going to copy that formula down. So we have all the dates in. I can test the if function by making that 24th of June date, maybe the 1st of June, so we know it's in the past. And this is too late. So that works okay. Let's undo that, put it back where it was. And now I'm going to apply the conditional formatting. So we add a bit of color onto our sheet as well. And the idea is that I want different colors to appear as the birthday becomes progressively closer. And to do this, what I'm going to do is first of all select all the data in the table, not the, the titles at the top there, the column headings, just the actual data, the names and dates and the days to go calculation. Click on the format menu, choose conditional formatting, and I'm actually going to set three conditions here. And the, it's slightly different. Instead of saying cell value is, I'm going to set it to formula is. 
okay and what I then do is click in the the long entry box there and type equals click on the first date which is C4 and I'm going to modify that by taking out the dollar sign between the C and the 4. And what that means is that the column reference remains absolute but the row reference is relative so as it as the conditional format moves down the table it updates the row number from 4 to 5 and so on. That'll make sense when you see the results so it colors in the row and not the whole table which is not what we want at all so uh, dollar c4 is the reference for that and I'm simply going to say is it less than 2 in other words is there a day to go before the birth date um, or is it the actual birthday or past the date and I'm going to apply a format to that I'm going to make the font color a yellow and I'm going to make the background color red click OK to that so that's quite a strong image there. So I'll actually modify that a bit more. I might make the font bold as well so it stands out even more. Okay, so I'm going to add a second condition and all I do really, yeah, what I can actually do here is cheat a bit because I can simply copy Control c to copy once I've highlighted it that first formula. Uh, my condition 2 formula is click in the box, the entry box and do Control v to paste and this time I'm going to say is it less than eight days okay so in other words this will apply if it's greater than one day or less than eight days so it's getting close but not critical and so I'm going to apply a different format to this I'm simply going to apply not a border a background color so sort of a an orangey yellow click OK and I'm going to do one more so formula is and obviously still got that formula on my clipboard so I can simply paste that in again and this time I want to know if it's less than 15 days so gives me plenty of time to get things organized click on format and this time I'll apply a green background indicating that it's getting closer but I've still got time to uh, get things sorted out click OK and if I just click away from the table you will see that because the birthday is on the 24th of June there are nine days to go so it's green now what I'll do is I'll move that birthday progressively closer to today's day and let's see how it changes. So if it was say the 20th of June, which is five days away, it suddenly goes to the, the yellow colour, indicating that things are getting a bit tight. And if I move it even closer, so if it's tomorrow, then we get the red alert come on, indicating that we haven't got much time to get things sorted out. So that's just a nice little example of how you can use date calculations, combine it with if functions and conditional formatting. And if I move that beyond, so if I put that birthday in the past, you'll see also um, that we get the too late message come up. And if I just go down here and we'll just put some different dates on, on each of these so you get an idea of how it all work so you can see the different colors and messages appear depending on how close you are to your birthday you can also use this with the sorting features if you uh, want to have your list sorted by the name I could just click into any one of the names there click on 21 names and click on my A to Z sort and that will organize names alphabetically but obviously my dates are now out of sequence but still by using the highlighting I can see which ones are close and which ones are far away and if I want to reset it so it's sorted by dates click any date click A to Z again and that sorts it by most recent to the most far away and finally even though I've missed this first one I can simply click in the formula bar and change 2011 to 2012 press enter resort the list and that birthday goes to the back of the pile now so hopefully i remember tom's birthday next year okay that concludes this tutorial hope you found that useful in the next one we'll be looking at how to enter format and calculate with times so see you then